Welcome to the news. Republican President Ed Galungo has reassured the nation his administration will continue to work with the church for the well-being of the country. And Socialist Party 2021 presidential candidate Fred Membe has backed calls to withdraw the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2019 from Parliament. Welcome to the news. President Ed Galungo has reassured the nation his administration will continue to work with the church for the well-being of the country. President Longo says the government and the church have the same desire of improving the livelihoods of the people through the provision of social amenities. Zanis reports that President Longo said this in Katuba when he officiated at the fundraising event for Katuba United Church of Zambia UCZ sub-congregation in Marapodi Conspiratory Consistory of Katuba. And President Lungo has observed that UCZ is among the churches that have been complementing government efforts in the areas of education and health services provision. The head of state has acknowledged that UCZ's outreach program across the country has impacted positively on the lives of the people in the rural areas. He states that government will therefore continue to work with the church. The Ministry of Lands has issued over 60,000 land titles to citizens since the commencement of the land titling program last year. Addressing a media briefing during the Patriotic Front PF Interactive Forum in Lusaka, Minister of Lands Jean Kapata said that the land titling program is thus on course. Ms. Kapata says the target of her ministry is to issue 75,000 titles every quarter of the year. She notes that her ministry is, however, not able to meet this target as the electronic signature of the Commissioner of Lands has not yet been included in the system. And Ms. Kapata has disclosed that her ministry has now reached the validation stage towards the formulation of the national land policy. She notes that this follows the conclusion of engagements her ministry held with traditional leaders. Is that we, are, we have concluded with our, our chiefs. And the next step that we are going to have is a validation, where again, we engage the chiefs to be part and parcel of, the, uh, of that valida validation, so that after validation we have agreed what is in the document, then um, the document will then uh, pass through, through the processes of it becoming law. Other than that, we also, in the process of doing a, a national auditing, we want to audit the land that Zambia has. We want to audit it because we are aware that 10% uh, of our land belongs to the state and uh, the other 90% belongs to uh, the chiefs. So we want to do an audit and it, it has been, it's a program that we've been doing year in, year out. I also talk about uh, issues of uh, illegality. There's a lot of uh, illegality in terms of land allocation or land alienation. And uh, mostly people use our cutters, our PF cutters give them peer for the guerriers and when they find an open space, they still go and, you know, want to um, encroach on people's land. I would like to take this, I've said this several times, that there will be no sacred uh, cows in terms of land allocation. Um, the other issue that we have in our ministry, we are in the process of also doing that with the, we launched the national titling program. And so far, we have um, come up with um, 60,000 uh, title deeds. Though we are supposed to have, um, every quarter we are supposed to have something like uh, 75,000 um, uh, titles. The problem that we have is that uh, the e-signature of the Commission of Land has not yet been in, included in our Zoom, it's in our system. So we are working towards that because it's tedious for one person to sign more than a thousand uh, title deeds. Otherwise we are on Minoa Mies Kapata has warned to soon revoke some timber licenses in northern west in northwestern in northern western in northwestern and western provinces of the country. She says her ministry has observed that there have been rampant illegal cutting and trading of timber in the two provinces. As a ministry, we are uh, embarked on uh, 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 planting of the solid uh, a tree, a solid bamboo tree. Solid bamboo tree has a lot of advantages and uh, we bought about uh, 3,000 3, seedlings and we intend to send, we have actually sent in some provinces 1,500 per, uh, per province so that that can be seed bank for that pro uh, particular uh, province. 
some of the provinces did not receive their seedlings because of the rain pattern. Now, coming to the issues of Mkula, government has put a ban on Mkula, and the ban stands until we control the activities in the bush. The reasons are very simple. It takes Mukula 90 years to mature, or to mature before it's, it's cut. And it only takes three minutes for someone to cut it. And the people that are cutting, they don't even plant any, any tree. You cut, they, they will give, put a rule where you cut one tree, plant five. Nobody, nobody, somebody, I'm, I'm challenging the Zambians out there who cry about Mukula to come and show me where they've planted uh, the trees. And the, I'm also in the process of revoking some um, uh, timber licenses because, again, in some areas in, in Western Province, in Northwestern Province, people are cutting trees indiscriminately. Even I've got information that some chiefs in, the, in some parts of the country are giving foreigners uh, licenses when the license is supposed to be given by the, the Ministry of uh, Lands and Natural Resources through our forest department. So I'm going to revoke some licenses in a few districts that's in Western Province and uh, Northwestern Province until we bring sanity to the issues of uh, the forest. Socialist Party 2021 presidential candidate Fred Membe has backed calls for government to withdraw the Constitution Amendment Bill 2019 from Parliament. Dr. Membe is in agreement with those who have observed that their bill is not acceptable to the Zambian people. Speaking at a media briefing on behalf of the party's uh, Politburo on Sunday morning, Dr. Membe said the whole constitutional review process must thus start afresh. Dr. Membe has taken note that there were serious disagreements over the bill among those who sponsored it, the more reason why it should be withdrawn. In his, in, in his belief, the National Dialogue Forum, NDF, which adopted the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2019, was not going to work from the onset. Let us withdraw this highly divisive and ill-conceived Constitutional Amendment Bill 2019. Let us rise above our differences political, religious, and otherwise, and find other acceptable ways to dialogue, reconcile our differences, and build consensus on how to deal with the Constitution and other contentious issues in our country today. Trying to dribble others and emerge as sweepstake winners won't win us anything. It won't win anybody anything. What we should seek is not a single winner, but for us all to be collective winners. This country deserves more. It deserves a Republican constitution and not a partisan manifesto disguised as a Magna Carta. Let us save the nation from relieving the nightmare of the last few years, which they were trying to wake up from. We know constitutions are products of special circumstances, but not this NDF amendment bill. The Movement for National Transformation, MNT, has challenged the Patriotic Front, a PF government, to enact the Access to Information, ATI bill, into law if it has nothing to hide. MNT President Daniel Shimunza says his party is of the view that the confusion of public speculation will continue to exist for as long as the country does not have a law or an access to information. Mr. Shimunza states that the MNT believes that if the ATI bill is enacted into law, it will define what kind of information that the public must have access to. He tells QTV News that government will, will then be willing to be held accountable. As long as the access to information bill is not advanced and released, adopted, ratified by the PF-led government, the confusion will continue to exist because the public should hold power accountable and power must be accountable, transparent, to generate good governance. So when the access to information bill is released, it will define what kind of information the public must have access to and government should be willing, if there's nothing to hide, there's nothing to hide, they must be released that access to information will be that people must have access to that information that relates to public interest. And this is why the confusion continues until that is done. The Patriots for Economic Progress, a PEP, has declined to comment on whether it feels weakened as an opposition voice now that it has quit the opposition alliance. PEP President Sean Tembo says his party prefers to limit its comment on its present standing in the country's political landscape. 
Mr. Temple states that the written statement in his uh, his party issued to announce its withdrawal from the opposition alliance is adequate for current purposes. He says that the PEP does not want to be misunderstood. Well, for now we are trying to uh, uh, limit our comments on, on that issue. Okay. Um, I think we issued the written statement. Uh, I think that statement is adequate for current purposes. Okay. Yeah, so we are trying to basically limit uh, how much we comment on that issue for fear of being misunderstood by the people out there. So okay. I think you, you, you pardon us on that one. Government says it expects the price of meal meal to be affordable given the price at which the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, is currently buying mains in the country. Minister of Agriculture Michael Katambo says that the 110 quarter set for a 50 kg bag of maize at which FRA is buying the grain is therefore strategic. In an interview, Mr. Katambo has told QTV News that this price is cost reflective and is meant to enable people in the country afford to buy either breakfast or roller meal. Mr. Katambo states that by setting a lower maize price than what was obtaining on the market, government was therefore looking at a bigger picture for the benefit of the Zambian people. So we are buying at 110 kwacha per 50 kg bag. The bigger picture is to look at the vulnerable, to look at the citizens of this country. You have to make it manageable, you have to make it affordable to a common citizen, to our citizens, because once the men's price is exorbitantly high, how will they manage the, the, our staple food, millimeter? So why FRA has looked into these things? Of course we called a stakeholders meeting. The consensus was that we are supposed to buy the bag of 50 kg bag at 130, 140 with the mm -hmm. stakeholders meeting that we had. But looking around as government, concerned and listening government, the governing the government that is caring for the people under the guidance of His Excellency President, Ed, Dr. President Edgar Lung, mm -hmm. we looked at the bigger picture that uh, citizens have to afford they are step of food, they have to afford the millimeter. So that is why we put it at 120. Because by that, the reflection, the cost reflections now would be that uh, whether it be roller meal or breakfast, then our citizens will manage it at 100 kwacha, 95 kwacha, or 90 kwacha. In other cases, 85 kwacha. When I'll take you to India, where Zambia's High Commissioner to India, Judith Kabuchimpanga, has invited one of India's leading private universities, Rayat Bara, to establish a campus in Zambia. Mrs. Kabichimpanga says that Zambians have confidence in the Indian education system, as evidenced by DMI St. Eugene University, which has expanded rapidly in Zambia. Speaking when she officiated at a Rayat Bara University convocation ceremony in the Indian state of Punjab, Mrs. Kabichimpanga said Zambia is ripe for joint ventures as it is politically stable, having changed a president six times through peaceful elections. First Secretary, Press and Tourism at the Zambian Mission in India, Bangwe Navili, has more in the following report. Zambia's High Commission to India, Judith Kapijimpanga, has officiated at Rayat Bara University Convocation Ceremony in the Indian state of Punjab. The High Commissioner has invited Rayat Bara, one of India's leading private universities, to open a campus in Zambia. <laughs> She has congratulated a Bachelor of Arts degree in sociology graduate Emmanuel Lipadi for scoring high marks. Sincere gratitude goes to the Rayat Bara University and the faculties for the greatest contribution you are making and you have been making to transform the world through high quality education. And Rayat Bara University Vice Chancellor Professor Daojit Singh says his university boasts of 30,000 students, mainly pursuing engineering, pharmacy, management, law courses, among others. Under the able guidance of our Honorable Chancellor, Sir Gurvinder Singh Gibara, the university in no time has become one of the leading universities of North India. According to Professor Singh, the university would consider a tie-up with Zambian institutions of higher learning. Bangwenavile, Punjab, India. 
The Zambia Congress of Trade Unions, ZCTU, has noted the need for government to refocus funds generated using TOGET to the easing of the tax burden of workers in the country. ZCTU General Secretary Cosmas Mukoka tells QNews that his union still insists that workers need to be exempted from some of the taxes they are currently required to pay. Minister Mukoka states that the ZCTU, for example, expects the introduction of the National Insurance Scheme to be a means for easing the tax burden for workers. What we emphasize most is the tax burden on the part of the workers. I still recall even some years back when we were proposing that we should aggressively introduce the targets. The idea was let the proceeds or takings from targets be used to reduce the tax uh, regime on the part of the workers. That was the idea and we emphasized and we made proposals in pre-budget proposals to ensure that that is done. But I think the, we are still facing a problem of uh, uh, the tax burden on the part of the workers. So equally as we made the proposals to the health insurance also that time, we looked at the social protection also as one of the, uh, the concepts which can also increase domestic revenue, which if put in a social security institution like the NAPSA, can make NAPSA be liquid and uh, look at uh, the way it can invest at infrastructure level and others. So, so most of the proposals we make are linked to the social and economic elevation of the, 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 the citizens of Zambia. But I think on the uh, target, or what we need to do now is to see how we can refocus now our thinking not just to align it to the infrastructure and the roads development. We can also see how the targets can also contribute to the welfare of the Zambians. The non-governmental organizations are coordinating council, NGOCC, says that the contribution of women to deforestation is informed by the lack of economic empowerment. NGOCC Executive Director Ingwase Mwale has told Kinews that women make up a huge chunk of those that are contributing to deforestation in the country because they are not economically empowered. Mrs. Mwale, Ms. Mwale states that the growth model of the country should thus be contextualized based on the unique needs of women in rural communities. So our contention in terms of ensuring that um, we move women our way from uh, deforestation is first and foremost to ensure that the growth sectors um, are diversified and uh, there was a mention in the report that uh, diversification of our Zambian economy is key especially uh, focusing on the, the, um, the natural capital um, the, the renewable natural capital. So in this regard, I think our point as NGOCC is that um, our growth model as Zambia needs to take into account the unique needs of women and men in society, but also the way the poverty profile is uh, looking at the urban rural um, dimension. Um, there's high poverty levels in the rural areas as much as 76%. But when you look at economic um, activity and opportunities that are created, not much is being targeted at the rural areas. And even the social protection mechanisms that we have as a country, a number of social protection packages are being provided to our communities as a charity approach. I think there is a need to relook at the social protection mechanism in Zambia to provide that which is developmental in nature, but also that which is more holistic and integrated to spur development. City of Lusaka, 1970, football club feels vindicated over the collapse of a war at Woodland Stadium, which led to the death of one person. Club Secretary General Christopher Chilongo has recalled that developer was advised to focus on strengthening the weekend walls of the stadium before putting up any structure. Mr. Chilongo has charged that it is clear from where he sees things that the developer's motive was only to make money and does not allegedly care about people's lives. From the beginning, when the club sought a developer, we sounded out that the war to the, to the stadium was very weak. And that if we were going to get 
a developer, the first point of entry was to relook how the structure as a fence around the Woodland Stadium was going to be reinforced. Given the fact that there was going to be heavy constructions of shops around the stadium. So from the beginning, we have never agreed with the developer on the design of the refurbishment or rehabilitation of the stadium. Secondly, we never altogether agreed on all what has happened in terms of modifications which have led to the accident. So we are saying, because business people are there for profit, they disregarded, the developer disregarded our wisdom about the weakness of the war. This weakness of the war has caused, in our opinion, the weakness into the structures which have been built around the stadium. We have been vindicated. Because of the differences which have been there, we thought, and I think we saw this coming, and it has happened now. We are saying, and appealing to the Football Association of Zambia, we are appealing to all well wishers, we are appealing to the government of the day, that they must support the city of Osaka Football Club 1970 in this trying moment. We are interested in getting the city of Osaka Football Club 1970 back where it belongs, into the Premier League, into the Super League. To that, we are committing ourselves. We want to directly manage the team. We want to take the team. We want to hire our own technical bench. We want to go back to Queensmead, train from there, and play the bowler from there. City of Osaka Football Club 1970 is stranded, has no facility where the team can train from and where the team can play from. And finally in our news, Lusaka Benz, the consortium of political parties and non-governmental organizations, has described as unjustified Saturday's yellow card protest against the Petro different PF government. Spokesperson Spoke Mlemoa says his consortium does not think the yellow card protest was the right way for citizens to express their grievances. Minister Mlemoa, who is also Zambian DNA spokesperson, says that this is especially given that the fact all the issues by the conveners of the protest raised are already being addressed by the government. He tells Q News that, the, that the, his consortium also holds the view that it is not right for those who stayed away from the National Dialogue Forum, NDF, to, criti to, be crit to criticize the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2019. Uh, one is we believe that uh, in a democratic dispensation like Zambia, citizens have got the right to air their views and grievances as well as demonstrating. But we feel that uh, the yellow card protest that uh, took place yesterday on the 20th of July was not really uh, the way to go about raising uh, their concerns. Because in the first place, the issues that the conveners of this protest were raising are issues that are being addressed by the relevant authorities. As for the amendments to the current constitution, we feel that uh, those who are now uh, shouting loudest are the same ones who have been invited to participate in the National Dialogue Forum, but they chose to stay away and be spectators instead of being participants. If they had gone to participate, they would have made uh, the desired changes to the constitution and they saw it fit. But as usual, being armchair critics, uh, they chose to stay away and smear mud on those who went to participate in the National Dialogue Forum. Therefore, they morally, they are bankrupt. They haven't got any more right whatsoever to stand and oppose that which they didn't want to participate in. That's it from our news desk. It's bye-bye and God bless.